testing. My name's Kelly, and I'm a guy, and I, I do chalk art. Tonight, I want to share with you the face of Jesus. It's yours to take home. It is called Portable Faith. I'm not sure how you're going to get that one in your pocket, but we'll work something out. I love sharing my art and words with people to inspire them to live a great life. Unfortunately for me this weekend, those great people are already here. So all that I'm going to do, that's right, give yourself a round of applause. So what I'm going to do is just help you along that journey that you're already on. And I hope that you can do the same for me. Tonight I want to talk about a great artist that I know you've heard of. His name is Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci is known for many things. His most famous art piece is probably the Mona Lisa. Everybody's heard of the Mona Lisa, right? There is, in my opinion, a far greater work for many reasons. I think Leonardo's greatest art piece is called The Last Supper of Christ. That's right, The Last Supper of Christ. It's the most inspirational art piece of Jesus that exists in my opinion. Leonardo da Vinci was an unusual man. If you study your history, he did a lot of strange things. He was a scientist, he was an inventor, he was a poet, he was a writer, and he was also an artist. And he was eccentric. All his manuscripts were written with his opposite hand okay. in a mirror backwards, as if in a code. And he had lots of projects going on. He was probably our first true ADDer or multitasker, since we're talking about technology this weekend. He would have the plans for a helicopter in one corner of his room. Over here, some music he was composing. In another corner of his room, some painting that he was working on. And perhaps right in front on his desk, some writings. And the strange thing about Leonardo da Vinci is he excelled at every one. He was a genius. And he was a Christian. When Leonardo decided to paint the Last Supper of Christ, he knew it was going to take some time, because he always took his time on projects, because he wanted them done the best that he could do them. He would start with sketches. Those sketches would evolve into a painting. He would use live models, people that he'd see on the street for all of his works. Sometimes he used his own face in a reflection of a mirror to do a portrait. When he set out to do uh, the painting of Christ, he knew that he would start with Jesus because it was the center of the painting and obviously the most important subject. And he thought to himself, where will I find my Jesus? So he went to the village of Milan that he was staying at for the time and he studied the crowds. That's what he did. He was a people watcher. He was well known, so he'd had to disguise himself. And he would sit on the streets and he would watch people looking each day for his Jesus. Sometimes he'd see someone do some great act of kindness and he would follow that person thinking, perhaps this is my Jesus. But he wouldn't get farther down the street when he'd see them do something that was just not like Jesus. Leonardo knew that he was going to pick a human subject for each one of the apostles as well. And the pain was going to take some time. Two months down the road, Leonardo was sitting outside the great cathedral, place of worship. He saw a young man approaching the church. And he noticed something. When the young man walked by, everybody smiled. Everybody seemed a little happier. And that caught Leonardo's attention. So he followed the boy. And he was happy to see that he was entering the church. But right before he entered, the young man stopped and helped several people with a load that they were carrying. Leonardo was pleased. He followed him into the church. And he was even happier to see the young boy kneel in prayer. And he thought to himself, perhaps after all these months of searching, I might have found my Jesus. The boy stood up after prayer and walked over to the choir. And that's when Leonardo knew for sure. When the boy sang, 
Leonardo thought to himself, it's like the heavens themselves had opened up and a choir of angels was singing. He knew he had found his Jesus. So after the choir was done singing, Leonardo approached the boy and he asked him if he would be a model for his last supper of Christ. And the boy agreed. The painting continued because in the last supper of Christ, Christ is in the center and he's with all his apostles. And so after he sketched and painted Jesus Christ at the Last Supper, Leonardo went again looking for all of the apostles. It took months. In fact, it took years. Finally, after hard work, he had found every apostle. He studied the scriptures and he looked for those attributes and qualities in the people on the streets of Milan. It took him 11 years, 11 years, and he had them all, all but one. He was missing Judas. Now we know from the Bible, Judas betrayed Christ. And so again, Leonardo thought to himself, where, where will I find my Judas? He went right to the jails to the prisons, looking for his Judas, a betrayer, a cheater, a thief, a murderer. He studied the criminals with the permission of the guards and the warden. He looked in their eyes, and again, he could not find his Judas. He told the guards, he said, surely, surely you have more hardened criminals than this. They said, oh yes. We keep them down in the dungeon. You'd have to get special permission to see them. And he did. He walked in to the dungeon with several guards at each side. And he didn't have to study these hardened the criminals. Because as soon as he entered the room, he saw his Jesus, or excuse me, his Judas. And how did he know? He could tell the way the other criminals were standing away from him, the way they looked at him, the way they spoke about him. He noticed how the guards clutched their spears more tightly when they were around him. And he looked into his eyes and his scarred face, and he knew after 11 years, he had found his Judas. And he convinced the prison to let him bring his art supplies into the jail and set up and sketch this hardened criminal. And he did. He became passionate about it because he could see finally his great work coming to an end. And he sketched and painted and sketched and painted. And finally, the Last Supper of Christ was finished. Now the whole time, this criminal was chained to a bench. And as Leonardo painted and sketched and he wondered what had brought this young man to this, this horrible place in life? He said, I don't know, sir, how you're, you came to this prison, what crimes you committed. But he said, I want to offer you a gift. He said, I would like you to be the first person in 11 years to see my work. You're the first person who's going to see Leonardo da Vinci's the Last Supper of Christ. And the man looked up and he walked over to the painting and he saw himself and he started crying uncontrollably, shaking. He fell to the floor. He started clenching his clothes and ripping them apart. Leonardo stepped back. Guards entered the room. And Leonardo said to the man, what have I done to offend you? Why are you so upset? The man looked up, tears running down his face, fists clenched, hatred in his eyes. And he says, Leonardo, you do not recognize me. 11 years ago, 
you plucked me from a choir loft. I was your Jesus. What takes a man to go from Jesus to Judas? I'll tell you this. It's not 11 years. It could be 11 seconds. Because in each one of us, there's a Jesus. And in each one of us, there's a Judas. Now, here's where I challenge you. We walk through life searching for the Judas and everyone we see. And we walk through life telling them about the Jesus within ourselves. This weekend I challenge you to get turned around. All the people in this room, look for the Jesus in them. When you return to your room each night, Look for the Judas in yourself and see how you can improve. I watch a TV show called Lost. Does anyone watch that show? And I noticed uh, in the first few seasons, they had a little phrase they would say to each other, Namaste. I didn't know what that meant. And I like to know things. So I went to the all great source of knowledge. Google. <laughs> and I typed in namaste just to see what it said. I wanted to know if it was some kind of religious greeting or what. And what it said was, I see the God in you. And I thought about that. And it made me think of a Bible verse that we're all familiar with. I know you've heard it. Our body is a temple. Yes? Now think about that. If you began, or before you began, every conversation that you had with someone, and you said, I'm going to look for the God of the Jesus in this person before I talk to them, before I do business with them, before I have any conversation, think how that conversation might change. If my body is a temple, and I know we use that scripture a lot to not use drugs. Has anybody not got that message? We're not using drugs, right? Okay, just making sure. But if my body is a temple, then so is yours. If God resides in me, He also resides in you. Let's look for that Christ. Thank you for having me tonight. Have a great weekend. Jim, what are you doing here? I'm in trouble. This is the boss man. If you didn't bring a hook with him, I'm all right. All right, yeah, all right, all right. What are you doing here, Jim? Well, I got something to say. Okay, I'm in the back all the time, so I can see the back of your heads, which also means I can see your cell phones. And guess what I saw when this picture was going on? I saw a lot of cell phones. And I thought, you know what? You guys need to do this right. So everybody's got a cell phone. Get it up, get it out. I want you all to come up here, take a picture of this thing, and send it to a friend who's not here and tell them what they're missing. So everybody, get up here, let's do it right, take a cell phone picture, quick, quick, we only got a few minutes. Remember, send it to one of your best friends that's not here and tell them, man, they're missing a bunch.